it's Tori and it's time for my April wrap up. So I was able to read a total of five books this month which I feel pretty good about. Most of them were towards the beginning of the month because I was, I've been doing finals <laughs> so haven't really had time to read very much. Plus I was planning on starting tomorrow, today's the last day of April, so tomorrow I'm going to be starting the Magical Readathon. If you haven't seen that video I'll link it down below so you can check it out but in May basically I'm doing a readathon and I didn't want to start any books that I needed to keep reading into May because I knew I wouldn't finish probably within the month of April because of all my finals so anyway without further ado let's just get into the books. So the first book I was able to finish this month I started it at the end of March but I was able to finish it and that is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. You may have seen in my spring break vlog that I started this however I wasn't able to finish it until the beginning of April which was fine it just took me a little longer but I ended up giving this approximately like a 2.5 out of 5 stars which is so sad I really enjoyed the writing was beautiful it was beautiful beautiful writing that's what pulled me in from the get-go the mystery was very enticing however what brought it so low in my opinion was I just felt like women in the story were extremely objectified nearly every man in the story was constantly like undressing every woman with his eyes and there were a lot of really erotic comments mostly by one character in particular but even like super side characters like characters that seriously only show up for like two seconds end up like talking about how they want to have sex with women or in some way it just made me really uncomfortable to be honest i just didn't appreciate the objectifying quality it had towards women it was so much to the point that it was overshadowing the actual story and i feel like that's when it's mostly a problem and i also don't mind it when it's a characterization thing but i don't feel like it's a characterization thing when almost every single man in this story is thinking in some way that way except for the main character's dad was like the only one that I didn't get that sense from but maybe that's just because I wasn't in his head because I probably wouldn't get that sense a ton from the boy either the main character if I wasn't in his head I almost DNF'd it several times the reason I didn't is because it seemed there would be parts where it seemed like the erotic comments would stop so I would be good for like a chapter or two and then it would start up again but then right when I was about to DNF it it would kind of go away and so it just ended up being where I just ended up finishing it it was just so disappointing I was so excited to read this book I've wanted to read it for a long time and when I started it like I said the writing just grabbed me it was beautiful writing some of the characters I really found enjoyable and made me laugh but again there was just aspects that overshadowed this great story and made it so I couldn't really mesh with the story as well because I was too busy focusing on the fact that everybody's objectifying every woman they meet so the next book I ended up picking up was The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is a historical fiction during the time of World War II in France after the Nazis took over. It focuses on two sisters. One is married and has a child. Her husband ends up going to war and is taken prisoner when France falls into the hands of the Nazis. She is left to take care of her daughter while there's a Nazi soldier staying in her home. And then there's her sister who's very rebellious, has kind of been in and out of different boarding schools has had a little bit of a neglected life but she ends up joining the resistance it was super good I ended up giving it five out of five stars I really enjoyed this one I just like Kristen Hanna's writing in the first place both of the books I've read by Kristen Hanna have addressed like sisterly trials I guess you could say just struggles between sisters but still having them learn to love each other both of these sisters are very different they have different priorities which is understandable as one married with children and the other one's not and I feel like that has a huge influence on priorities during wartime but I really enjoyed both sisters I felt like they both had incredible personalities I felt like the world of World War II was very well built up in the story I felt like there was a mystery aspect to the story that was very well executed and I enjoyed the reveal towards the end honestly I didn't really have any specific critiques for it um, there were some parts that I felt like were a little slower and it was almost like things were happening but just the way it was written felt really slow sometimes 
But other than that, I really enjoyed this story and I really want to read more of Kristen Hanna's work as I've loved both of the books I've read by her so far. So highly recommend if you're in the mood for a World War II novel. If you haven't read it yet, I know it's pretty popular so a lot of people have read it, but if you haven't, very good. Definitely a tearjerker though, so keep that in mind when you pick it up. The next book I ended up finishing was actually a classic. There was just halfway through the month I was just really in the mood for a classic, especially a gothic classic. And so I ran to my local used bookstore and got a couple that were like $3 each. And the one I got that I read was The House of the Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I really enjoyed this. I gave it like a three out of five stars. It was an interesting mystery and I love Nathaniel Hawthorne's writing, but it was so slow. The middle third, nothing happened. It was just explaining the same basic things over and over about how these old people are enjoying having their young niece come to stay with them or whatever and that she's a bright light in their lives. And it's just like this whole, like multiple chapters worth of basically just describing that whole relationship. And it was just really boring. And then by the end, I almost felt like the plot twist, it was one of those where I didn't see it coming, but it was disappointing. <laughs> I was hoping for a little bit of a darker reveal than what we got, so. Anyway, it was almost like I would have preferred to have it be a plot twist that I saw coming because the one I thought was going to happen that I think Nathaniel Hawthorne wanted the reader to think was coming would have been more interesting than what actually happened. So anyway, if you don't know what this is about, essentially it follows this family curse. It's set in Salem, Massachusetts. And during the witch trials, there was this judge who really wanted this land who was owned, which was owned by this man called Matthew Mall. And the judge, Judge Pinchion, um, during the witch trials, ended up having the man, Matthew Mall, executed for witchcraft. And just before the man hung, he cursed the Pinchion family, saying, God shall give him blood to drink. Then not long after that, Judge Pinchion took the land that he wanted, built a house on it, and just as he was opening it up, throwing a big party for it, um, he was found dead. <laughs> And so, a little scary. That was just such an interesting premise and just seeing this family seemed interesting. But again, it was just so, there was just a huge chunk that meant nothing. And it's not a very long book either. So having a huge chunk of nothing means that there's barely anything <laughs> because there was already not very much to begin with. It was interesting at the back though, there was an essay that discusses how this was Nathaniel Hawthorne's favorite book of the two he wrote. This one was just a lot closer to home and he, I guess, had a better understanding of what to write for this one, whereas The Scarlet Letter, he really was out of his comfort zone. I mean, obviously he was writing about a woman having a child out of wedlock in a different time period. Like it was not really something he knew a ton about, but this one he felt like he could understand as the Judge Pinchion that the curse was originally set on is based on his own ancestor who was a judge during the Salem Witch Trials. I enjoyed it. If you're into classics, if you liked The Scarlet Letter, definitely try this one out. If you're okay with The Scarlet Letter, you'll probably be okay with this. <laughs> At least that's the experience I had with it. Next, I ended up picking up a book that I've been actually reading for a couple months now as a research project thing for school and I finished the project so I finished this book this month and it's a non-fiction which I don't read very often but I enjoyed this one it is called The Woodvilles, The Wars of the Roses and England's Most Infamous Family by Susan Higginbotham. This is a non-fiction story about the Woodville family. They lived during the Wars of the Roses. Elizabeth Woodville, the daughter of Jaquetta and Richard Woodville, ended up being secretly married to King Edward IV during that time. And so this family basically rose from practically nothing and became very, very well known. I really, really love Susan Higginbotham's approach to this family, particularly as the Woodvilles really are very infamous in a lot of ways. The kings after Edward IV ended up spreading a lot of rumors about the Woodvilles that were pretty unfair to be honest and it was just a time of political upheaval and so the Woodvilles were caught in the crossfire in a lot of ways and ended up falling on one side or the other in a lot of cases. She just really approaches them as individual people who have different personalities, who each have their own history, 
and who each were just trying to survive in this extremely tumultuous time while being on the forefront of political life during the Wars of the Roses in England. And so I really, really enjoyed it. It's not super long either, so it was pretty quick to read. I mean, it would have been if I had just sat down and read it, probably. I took a couple months because I was kind of going chapter by chapter and doing my research project as I read. Yeah, it was really good. If you're interested in historical nonfictions and maybe haven't really read much about the Woodvilles because they're not super, I don't see much about them. Usually if I see books that include them, it's usually just about the Wars of the Roses in general or about like Richard III and so they're mentioned. So I gave this like four out of five stars. I can't really, it's hard for me to really give a nonfiction book higher than a four stars unless it's like really well written. And this one was just like, I enjoyed the approach and everything, but like it was just written like a normal history type thing to me at least. So the last book I was able to finish, I actually finished today, like an hour ago. And that was the audiobook I was listening to this month, this month, which was the Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is a high fantasy about a man called Kaboth, and he is a innkeeper currently, but this chronicler comes to town and has heard that this innkeeper is Kaboth, who is well known as a hero. He's at this point a legendary figure. Currently he is in his middle age, and this chronicler asks if he can tell Kaboth's story. And Kvoth says, I will tell it to you, but you need to give me three days. This is going to be a trilogy, and each book is a different day. So this first book is the first day of him telling his story. I gave this a four out of five stars. I thought it was very well written. I know a lot of people love this, so I feel bad not giving it a five out of five stars, and I considered doing that. But the only reason it's down a star for me was just, I just didn't really feel like by the end I had learned much beyond just background. I feel like this story is a hard one to judge because I feel like it's going to be one that after I read the trilogy, I can really have firm in my mind how I feel about the story because it's like Lord of the Rings. If you've read Lord of the Rings, even if you've seen the movies, like J.R.R. Tolkien wrote them, they were all one book and then he just split them up into three. And I feel like that's similar to this where like, even with Lord of the Rings, I just have a hard time being like, which one's my favorite? Because to me, they're all just one long story. I can't separate them personally. It's the same thing with this series. I just feel like by the end, it will just be one big long story. And so the first part of the story is interesting, but it's a lot of background information. It's a lot of getting to know the characters and there's not really going to be as many plot twists in the first third of a story, you know? <laughs> there's gonna be all the questions that are gonna come up and that's really what this one ended up having. There were some plot twists, but not, no mind blowing ones. I feel like I finished this book and I'm still processing it. <laughs> if you can't tell by my rambling, since I just finished it an hour ago. I didn't end it and feel like my mind was blown. I felt like I just had a lot of questions and I want to know more and I enjoy the characters, but it wasn't enough to be like, oh my gosh, this is a five star read. It was enough to be like, I'm going to keep reading because I feel like by the end of this entire story, it will be a five star story. It's just the first part of that story. And so it's hard for me to give the five stars. I don't know if that makes sense, but one thing I will say that I really enjoyed about this, that it is kind of interesting that I enjoyed it, is how much the main character sometimes irritated me. It was in a very realistic way. It wasn't in a way that he was just whiny, like some, he's just has this arrogance about him and and sometimes it just made me frustrated because he was very arrogant and impatient about things. And I was like, why can't you like be a little more trusting of some of these people? Or he was constantly talking about his reputation and how he wanted to earn a really grand reputation at this school that he goes to. But the reason why it didn't, why I enjoyed that aspect of him was because he was arrogant but he could back it up. He was very smart, very intelligent. He was very a very quick learner. I enjoyed him because I felt like he was a very flawed character in an understandable way. It wasn't in a mega annoying way. <laughs> it was annoying, but like how your friends annoy you sometimes because they have little quirks or whatever and make decisions that you're like, that was dumb. <laughs> Especially because he's telling this as a middle-aged man. So he has the 2020 vision of hindsight. So he is able to say things like, I know this was dumb, or like, I know that that was wrong. And so you're able to like, 
even though you're irritated by his decisions, he's also like, yeah, that was dumb. <laughs> I wish I could have been more patient or I wish I hadn't done that. And he's still like, even in his middle age, he has this arrogant side to him. But again, he can back it up. So anyway, I really like Kvoth as a character and I liked the other characters. There is a girl character, his like, his girl, who kind of annoys me because she's a little, I don't know, like there's a lot of excuses made for how she constantly with a million men. I just, I can understand some of the excuses, but at the same time I just, cause she complains all the time about how these men constantly throw themselves at her and how she's so annoyed by it and whatever. But then she just like lets them all the time. And it's just like, okay, yeah, you can buy me food. And I understand that she's poor and she's just taking every opportunity that comes her way. But it's also kind of irritating that she's constantly complaining about the men and then still just like letting them do it. I'm not going to go too much into detail about that because I don't want to spoil anything, but I really liked it. Again, it's only four stars because I feel like there was more questions by the end rather than plot twists or answers of any kind. And I just didn't blow my mind. And five stars is for books that really, really make me feel a lot. And I felt like this, there were parts that made me feel a lot, but by the end, it was just like the first part of a story. So anyway, that is it for my wrap up for this month. I'm sure this video is going to be going up a little late. Sorry about that. I'm moving out of my apartment. So I'm going to be packing and cleaning and everything the next few days. So I don't know how much editing I'm going to get done. And I certainly won't be able to post it by Friday night because I will be leaving Friday. So, but I will get it up as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching. And let me know down below some of the books you read this month that you loved as I would love to know. And I will see you next week. Bye.